how to clean your hydration system, whether you have and use a bladder or reservoir, or if you use these soft bottles or even hard bottles for that matter, uh, with the little tops and tubes. So I will show you those. First thing, um, I've got a couple of two, a couple of tools that I use pretty regularly. This actually came in the Camelback uh, cleaning kit. So it's just a brush. You could replace uh, this brush with any kind of standard kitchen brush. It just needs to be able to get into the opening of your bladder. Um, this has been invaluable. This is a wire uh, tube per se that fits inside the actual tube of the bladder with a little brush on the end. So that goes all the way up. So super simple. And then I have a bucket that I dedicate to all my cleaning stuff for just this hydration kit. Um, and just put it under, put all these things in this bucket and store it under the cabinet. After I get done with every run, I usually wear a vest when I run. Nine times out of the 10, I'll wear, wear it with just the small bottles. Uh, if I'm going on a super long run, say two hours or more, or hike for that matter, I'll use the bladder. And in this system, what I'll do is always use the blad water in the bladder. I don't like using the bladder with any kind of energy, sugar, electrolyte, because it gets funky quick. It absorbs that, that taste into the bladder and it's harder to clean out. So I will mention that. You can if you want, but I choose to use the smaller bottles. This is a 12 ounce and there's also a 20 ounce that I use. This is the Nathan Vest. Um, I like to have these in my front pockets with uh, an easy to drink tube system with electrolyte and or energy drink for my longer runs because A, they're easier to clean, but B, I know exactly how many ounces I've had of that product. So if I have that in my bladder and I'm sipping and sipping, I lose reference to how much I've had and it's really important when I'm racing or I'm doing any kind of long, hot uh, hike or long run, I need to know what my, my I'm ingesting and taking in with both energy and electrolytes. So I like to have these front and center on my chest um, also, it, they're easy to refill rather than taking the bladder out, refilling, putting things in. In essence, you necessarily wouldn't have to refill it, but it's just kind of, kind of a pain in the butt. So that's my system. I w wanted to mention that. And then in terms of cleaning solutions, it, the whole reason why you want to do this is to avoid having mold uh, build up in these attachments. And I will say with a bladder system, highly recommend getting one. This is a Nathan system. I use Nathan. Uh, they're vests. Uh, I use Osprey backpacks. Um, very similar system for my hikes. But this has a detachable tube so that you can actually clean the tube really well and you can also clean this really well. So highly recommend that. And in terms of cleaning solutions, you can go with reservoir tablets that they or bladder cleaning tablets, they're effervescence. You drop them in, you put water in, you shake it up, you let it sit, and then you run it through the tube. Those work really well, super easy. You can also, along the same lines, a little bit cheaper, denture cleaning tablets. Um, if you want to make your own, which is what I tend to do, the bleach solution, so two to five drops per liter of water. Again, all of those things will kill bacteria and mold. And then in terms of odor with these uh, hydration systems, baking soda, a half cup of baking soda, the three-fourths cups of water, or lemon juice, half a quarter cup, quarter cup baking soda or lemon juice to three-fourths, let me take a step back, baking soda, quarter cup to three-fourths cup water, lemon juice, quarter cup to a liter of water. Phew, that was hard to get out. Anyway, moving forward. So that's cleaning solutions. Again, what I do, take this off. First thing that I do, empty it out, get all the pockets empty. This is like a shirt for me, so, and I'm a sweaty Betty. If I don't clean that right away, after every run, it's gonna stink, and that's not a great thing if you try to run in a group of fun people. They will not run near you. So I just kind of move it around in here and then let it sit for about five minutes. Once it's done, I just have a little bit of detergent, washing detergent in there. 
Once that's sat for about five minutes, I'll rinse it out really thoroughly. I've had this one for several years, I would say four or five years now, and it really uh, just gets so much use out of it. Most of my runs, I'll use the small pack, small vest, just because I'm going for an hour or less, and I'll put water on those front pouches and easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, so then I will take, if let's say it's on a short one, I'll take my go-to bottle and I will put this over on the side for now. Just rinse this out. If it's water, I just rinse it out. Um, use this little cut up sponge, uh, kitchen sponge. There's a scrubby side and a sponge side. And just kind of get in there and scrub it around. Typically with, if I just have water in there, I'll rinse it out and kind of clean it with water. And then the top is important to get through. Just rinse it through. Take the mouthpiece off, clean that. I usually clean that with a little bit of Dawn. And then let these pieces sit. Again, if these sit wet, that's where the mold can start to grow. So that is uh, a standard run if I have water in there. If I have any kind of sugar in there, I'll spend a little bit more time, rinse it out, maybe use a little bit of bleach, maybe use a little bit of Dawn, scrub those out, um, and same concept, rinse them out and dry them. The drying is probably the most important thing. Half of this is just really rinsing them out. If you come back from a run and you throw it in a corner and it sits there, that's when stuff starts to build. So if, at the very least, if you just come back and rinse it out and take those pieces apart and let it dry, you're golden. And then for the bladder, what I'll do is, again, I only use water, but let's say I'm using some kind of sugary solution that I will absolutely positively put bleach. This is a solution, this is not all bleach. Remember, it's two to five drops of bleach to a liter of water. So this is mixed up already and I have it labeled just in case so everybody knows what it is. They don't think it's drinking water. And I will fill this about halfway, put the top on. Shake it up. I will let this sit for about 10 minutes or longer. Um, just let it sit and then the last step that I'll do after it's sat for a while is take the mouthpiece off and then let it drain. So it goes through the tube. I don't want bleach on my vest. So I'll run some through, not all the way through, and take this off. There's a whole bunch of systems you can use, but um, run this wire all the way through while it's got some bleach in there and it goes all the way up to that top piece such a great tool to use and then pull that back out so that scrubs that whole tube put that back in continue to drain it i guess i didn't have to take the mouthpiece off then and let it drain all the way through And not, you know, again, when I use just water in here, what I'll do is just rinse this out, do kind of a, a deep clean once a month, like this with the bleach or tablets. But if I'm just using water, I just rinse it out, I'll wash this piece, I'll flush everything with water, and that's then I hang it to dry, which I'll show you in a minute. If I'm using, I don't do this, but if you were to use sugary, I would highly recommend at least rinsing it out after every use, right after your use. Again, most of the time, 
the bacteria and the mold build up because they're not being cleaned. So if you do have bleach in here, I will rinse this out very thoroughly and then run water through the tube. This would be considered with the bleach a deep cleaning. Again, I do this about once a month. You get the point, shake that up. And if you don't like the taste, you can try those effervescent tablets. Um, after I rinse this out completely, then I'll, what I'll do is I'll kind of walk outside, just wing it around in a circle. I don't want to do this now because it'll go all the, over the walls. It's a great way to get all the water out of the tube. And then from there, again, scrubbing the mouthpiece, I'll do that as well. From there, what I do is hang it dry on my standard laundry rack. So over here, again, after whipping this through and getting all the water out of it, there is a fancy, this came with a Camelback cleaning kit. You can just hang the, actually you can do it this way, mouthpiece and Again, use gravity, right? Let the gravity pull the water down. Again, mouthpiece is off so everything can, can clear, but also some of these have a little metal piece, so you can use the metal piece to hang it. So there's a lot of different ways to go. Sometimes you just hang it over the laundry thing as long as it's draining. Um, in terms of the bladder, I will wipe this down on the outside. So that's dry, and then on the inside, if it's a big wide, this is a smaller bladder, if it's a big wide bladder, I'll sometimes just put uh, a towel in there and wipe it out. You can use paper towel. Paper towel is great if you're traveling um, or a towel if you're traveling. There's also this product called Bone Dry, B-O-N Dry. I'll put that in the links in the comment section. If you have a bladder that's split down the center so that's two compartments, you can cut this up as well, but you just simply stuff this in there and this absorbs all the water. And for, for most, you can just let it dry like that on a flat surface. Again, great for travel, or if you don't have this, you can use a towel and just lay it flat. I like to actually hang it dry, so I put a carabiner within this little standard kitchen clip. And so I hang mine, again, using gravity, and it, it's dry within an hour. This is an old school dryer for bladders. Um, the only issue with this, which you can fix, is the hanger, I think, is you, know, you, you hang it this way and all the water goes to the bottom. So what I like to do if I end up using this is, again, use that clip so you're using gravity and hanging it down. The one thing I will mention that I didn't mention is to make sure that you're getting a little scrub brush in there for the deep cleaning in the bottom bracket. Usually if you're flushing things out and you're hanging things dry, this can purge any of the water out, so that'll solve all your problems. Um, but there you have it, how to clean your hydration kit.